now that we've talked about how to reduce a fraction and how to create an equivalent fraction, let's talk about improper fractions and mixed fractions. Improper fractions are going to be fractions in which the numerator is greater than the denominator. Mixed fractions are going to be fractions that contain a whole number, like 1 and 7 eighths. For the most part, you're going to want to convert mixed fractions in order to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. So let's go over the steps for converting a mixed fraction. Step number one, multiply the whole number by the denominator. Then, step number two is to add the numerator. Step number three is to take that total and put it over the denominator. Let's try an example. Take the mixed fraction 1 and 7 eighths. Step 1 is to multiply that whole number by the denominator. So, 1 times 8 is equal to 8. Then take that value and add in the numerator. 8 plus 7 is going to be 15. Finally, step 3 is to take that total, 15, and put it over the original denominator, which is 8. So, 1 and 7 eighths is equal to 15 over 8. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to know about performing fraction operations. When you add and subtract a fraction, all of the fractions involved must have a common denominator. When at all possible, make sure to determine the least common multiple of the denominators so that you're using numbers that are easy to perform calculations with. When you're multiplying a fraction, you don't need to worry about common denominators. Just multiply the numerators and the denominators separately. When you divide fractions, what you're going to really end up doing is multiplying the first fraction by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So, for example, 1 half divided by 3 fourths will become 1 half times 4 over 3. Let's go ahead and try a few examples. First example asks us to determine the sum of the following expression, 3 over 5 plus 2 over 3. Our first step is going to be to find the lowest common multiple. If you take a look at the two denominators, we have 5 and 3. The lowest common multiple is going to be 15. Now that we know that the lowest common multiple is 15, we're going to need to calculate the equivalent fractions. So, our first fraction is 3 over 5. What do we need to multiply 5 by in order to get a 15 in the denominator? 5 times 3 is equal to 15. So we're going to need to multiply the bottom by 3. And because we multiplied the denominator by 3, we also need to multiply the numerator by 3. So 3 times 3 is equal to 9. 5 times 3 is equal to 15. Our new fraction is 9 over 15. Let's do the same process for our second fraction. Our second fraction is 2 thirds. So we need to ask ourselves what times 3 is going to equal 15 in the denominator. That's going to be 5. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 5 over 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. Now that we have two fractions, 9 over 15 and 10 over 15, that have the same denominator, we can now perform the addition problem. Add your numerators only. 9 plus 10 is equal to 19. And then put that over the same denominator, 15. So the sum of 3 over 5 plus 2 over 3 is equal to 19 over 15. Now let's go ahead and try some exercises. Take some time to try the following expressions, and when you're finished, we'll check your answers and go through a few examples together.
Okay, put down your pens and check your answers. Now that you've taken a look at the answers, let's go ahead and go through a few of those examples together. Let's start by going over example number two. This question asks us to add 12 over 25 plus 13 over 5. Now remember that when you're adding fractions, you need to have a common denominator. But the good news is that in this case, 12 over 25 already has the lowest common multiple as our denominator. All we have to do is convert 13 over 5 into a fraction that has 25 as its denominator. We can accomplish that by multiplying both the top and the bottom by 5, giving us a new fraction of 65 over 25. Now that we have a common denominator, all we need to do is add the numerators only. So 12 plus 65 gives us 77, and then we keep the same denominator. So our answer is 77 over 25. Let's take a look at example number eight. This example contains only decimal numbers and we're supposed to solve the following expression. 0 0.21 plus 0 0.946 plus 1.324. The trick here is to line up your decimal points and then add each number in its column from right to left. So in our first column on the right hand side, we have zero plus six plus four, which is 10. Write down the zero and carry the one. We then have two plus four plus one plus that carryover one, which gives us eight. Our next column is three plus nine plus two, which is 14. Put down your four and carry the one. And then our last column is going to be one plus the carryover one, so two. Final answer is going to be 2.48. Now that you've tried some examples, let's go ahead and take a look at a test question. Number 11 tells us to multiply 7 over 5 times the quantity of 3 over 7 minus 2 over 5. Note that we need to perform the subtraction problem inside the parentheses before we multiply by 7 over 5. And as with addition, subtraction questions require a common denominator. Common denominator between 7 and 5 is 35. So to convert our first fraction, we're going to multiply by 5 over 5, giving us 15 over 35. Our next fraction needs to be multiplied by 7 over 7, giving us 14 over 35. So our new fractions inside the parentheses are 15 over 35 minus 14 over 35. Subtract the numerators only to give us 1 over 35. Now that we've completed the subtraction problem, we can multiply 1 over 35 times 7 over 5. Now, when you're multiplying fractions, you don't need to have a common denominator, but it is useful to cancel diagonally, if you can, in order to make your calculations easier. In this case, 7 goes into 35 five times. So the 7 cancels out, the 35 changes to 5, and our multiplication problem becomes 1 times 1 in our numerator and 5 times 5 in our denominator, giving us a value of 1 over 25, or answer choice C.